Hi everybody. On 6th of December 2023, Google launched something called Gemini Pro. Alphabet releasing Gemini, its latest and most powerful AI model. Google just introduced its new generative AI model dubbed Gemini. It is seen to be more capable, flexible and better optimized for smartphones. And this is a very very big step in the tech world because last December, Google was facing an existential crisis and we all know why. ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, then get ready. Until now, Google has been a monopoly in the search market with a 91% market share and 4.2 billion users. But suddenly, OpenAI came in and disrupted the entire search engine market. Now, most people would argue that ChatGPT barely has 180 million users, which is what 23 times smaller than Google. So why would Google be worried? Well, this is because, ladies and gentlemen. ChatGPT is literally the fastest growing internet consumer business in history. Your company is the maker of ChatGPT which has taken the world by storm. AI chatbot ChatGPT is now the fastest growing consumer app in history. And we have about 100 million weekly active users now on ChatGPT. If you see this chart, while Instagram took 2.5 years to hit 100 million users, TikTok took about 9 months to reach 100 million users. But ChatGPT barely took 5 days to hit 1 million users and just 60 days to hit 100 million users. So at this pace by next year if ChatGPT has 1 billion users it will scrape off 25% of Google's market. And more importantly OpenAI has the cash support from a powerful player like Microsoft which has a reputation of killing companies using its business tactics. Today we are taking another step to keep our marketplace competitive. The Justice Department has charged Microsoft with engaging in anti-competitive and exclusionary practices designed to maintain its monopoly. This is the reason why when Google barred failed to show competency, the stock price of Google fell by 10% and Google lost 100 billion dollars in stock value in just a single week. So now Google has launched Gemini Nano, Gemini Pro and Gemini Ultra. three revolutionary ai products that are expected to beat the dominating rise of chat gpt and this again has had such a crazy reaction in the stock market that the alphabet stock price rose by 5% and gained 80 billion dollars in value in a single day so the question we hear is what is the story of this ai war between google and microsoft what is so special about gemini nano pro and ultra that they're being called as the chat gpt killers in the market What is the technical difference between Google and ChatGPT and as students of business what can we learn from this tech war between Google and Microsoft This video is brought to you by Growth School People both Google Gemini and ChatGPT are the perfect indicators that state the extraordinary power of AI So regardless of who wins this AI war you must know how to use these incredible AI tools to enhance your skills and boost your career Because in the future there will be only two types of people people who ignore this change and people who will use this change to transform their career and move ahead in the race so if you want to unlock the power of ai and learn the crazy application of chat gpt mid journey and 10 other ai tools for free then i would recommend this special 3 hour workshop on ai tools and chat gpt by growth school This is actually a paid workshop but only for Think School subscribers. It is absolutely free. And the first 1000 people who register using the link below will get a bonus worth 2000 rupees. This workshop also includes the application of the latest updates of ChatGPT and 15 other AI super tools that can transform the way you work. And you know more than 5 lakh people have already taken this workshop and they have rated this workshop 4.7 on 5 on Trustpilot. So if you want to learn how to unlock the superpower of AI use the link below to join the workshop today for free and also get the bonus and now on with the episode Chalo let's start with the basics and understand why is this AI war so so crucial for both Google and Microsoft If you look at the revenue breakdown of Google you will see that in 2022 10.5% of Google's revenue came from YouTube ads 11.7% came from Google network ads and 58.1% only came from google search ads so out of 80% of its ad revenue 58% only came from search ads and as we saw google stands as a market leader in the search market with an incredible 91.85% market share so no other player even comes remotely close to google 
This is how important searching is for Google. The world's most popular search engine, Google, as of last month, Google had a global market share of about 92%. But if you look at the other side to Microsoft, Microsoft is an amazing company because they get their money from diverse sources. If you see this chart, the major revenue sources of Microsoft include cloud services, MS Office, Windows, and even gaming is a major source of Microsoft's revenue. So Microsoft hasn't put all of its eggs in the same basket. Now keep this in mind because we'll come back to this chart later. If this is very, very clear to you, let's understand the AI war between Google and Microsoft. This is a story that dates back to 2014. During this time, Google made a big move in the AI world when they bought a company called DeepMind. And Google made this purchase for $500 million. On top of it, if you look at this chart, as of 2021, Google had the maximum number of research papers on AI. But in 2019, Microsoft decided to step up its game and they put in a massive $1 billion budget to strike a genius deal with an AI company called OpenAI. All right, Microsoft going all in on AI, the world's biggest public company announcing an investment of $1 billion in Elon Musk's OpenAI to build artificial intelligence. The question is, what exactly was this deal? Well, this deal said that OpenAI could use Microsoft's cloud infrastructure to build its AI. And in return, Microsoft would get to use OpenAI's technology to earn money. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, the AI war began with Google and Microsoft both going head-on into the AI revolution. And as we all saw, in November 2022, something crazy happened when OpenAI launched ChatGPT. Now the question is, in spite of Google investing so heavily into AI, why didn't Google launch their own version of ChatGPT before OpenAI? Well, as it turns out, Google's engineers did create a chatbot which was very similar to ChatGPT. And they did it two years before ChatGPT. But Google decided not to launch it because they were worried about safety issues. This is the story of Google's unreleased chatbot. And now in the business world, this decision seems to be a big, big mistake. A mistake so blunderous that it is questioning the very competency of Google. And to top it all off, Microsoft did something absolutely revolutionary by combining Bing with ChatGPT. And guess what? This is where the virtuous cycle of generative AI plus search engine comes in. And what does this virtuous cycle say? It says that the more data that AI can search and respond to, the larger will be its scope of usage. And this scope of usage brings in a vast category of users. So the more users the platform gets, the more data it gets. And the more data means the AI can learn better and faster. This way, again, its utility value shoots up and eventually it ends up acquiring more categories of users. So with each passing day, ChatGPT is getting smarter and smarter. And just like Google got better and better with search as people kept on using it, with this lethal combination, Microsoft is challenging the very existence of Google because this is one of the biggest barrier to entry in this business. This is the reason why, when ChatGPT started rising in popularity, Google hit code red. So suddenly, everyone in Google started working on AI because their $160 billion search engine business was in danger. This is the reason why Google rushed to launch their own AI called Google Bard, which was again considered to be a breakthrough announcement. But you know what? Surprisingly, Bard was so terrible that in just one day, Google lost $100 billion in share value and its stock went down by 11%. Now the question is, what exactly was so terrible about Bard? Well, take a look at it yourself. Some technical difficulties, I guess you could say, for Google during a test run of its new AI chatbot Bard. Google AI chatbot Bard has been giving incorrect answers. Bard has already made a boo-boo. Cost Google $100 billion in market value. This is a story of Google Bard's failure. But as we all know, Google did not give up. And on 6th of December 2023, Google came up with something called Gemini. And this is being called as the Chat GPT killer in the market. And as soon as this Chat GPT killer was announced by Google, Google's share price shot up by 5% and it added $80 billion to its market cap. So now the question is, what exactly are the superpowers that make Gemini so special? How is it different from Chat GPT and why is it called the Chat GPT killer? Well, this is where you need to understand the difference between a natively multimodal system and just multimodal system. Now, I know this sounds complex, but don't worry at all. 
as usual i'll explain it in such a way that even a 17 year old kid will be able to understand so let's understand this concept using the analogy of a smartphone and a camera all right people if you look at a smartphone it is designed from the start to perform a variety of functions so it can make calls take photos send text browse the internet and run various apps by default so all these functions are integrated into the fundamental design of the smartphone so the smartphone is built with the idea that it will handle these multiple tasks seamlessly so now looking at the smartphone market let's say canon starts adding a communication feature to its traditional camera now if you look at a traditional canon camera it was primarily designed to take photos but later if developers start to add more functionality to it so that it can make calls and also send messages you tell me will this canon camera suddenly be as amazing as the original smartphone no right why because the canon camera was originally meant for photography so the added communication features might not be as seamless or as integrated as they were in a smartphone right so just like this if you look at a natively multimodal system and a just multimodal system a natively multimodal system is just like the smartphone it is built with the intent of handling multiple types of data like text image sound and even videos whereas just like the traditional camera the just multimodal system is originally designed for a singular data set like text but it has different integrations added to it which might include image and sound processing so while google gemini is natively multimodal just like our smartphone chat gpt is just multimodal like our canon camera with an added calling feature so the superpower that google has is that Gemini is designed from the very start to process image, sound and text whereas ChatGPT was originally built only for text and then it got added up with features from DALI and other plugins so it's only now that it's getting more and more features added this is the reason why it's more likely that Gemini outperforms ChatGPT in the long run if this is very very clear to you let's come to the second superpower The second superpower of Gemini AI is its versatility. Gemini AI comes in three versions. The first version is Gemini Nano, and this version is the lightweight version that can run on Android phone even without the internet. Yes, it can run even without the internet. Then there is Gemini Pro. This is the heavy duty version that is going to be the brain behind Google's AI services including that of Bard. And finally, the most powerful version is called as Gemini Ultra. and this is designed specifically for businesses and data centers and it's something that chat gpt does not have yet now if you look into the potential application of gemini it's absolutely mind blowing for example in this official google document case here's a kid who has solved a physics problem and has input his hand written solution and on the other side gemini has carefully studied the image understood his handwriting understood where the kid went wrong and did not just give the right answer but also gave a detailed explanation of the correction similarly gemini could also take inputs like these where the user is showing an image and asking with voice input about how to make an omelet with the following ingredients and gemini is able to identify the objects understand the context of their usage and is able to give a step by step process on how to make an omelet based on the image input so if the real version is as crazy as this demo it would open up a huge scope of applications for gemini the third superpower that gemini has is the extraordinary computing power of google and you know what by the end of this year google's computing capabilities are expected to be 5 times more than open ai and they're projected to be 20 times more by next year as a result google's ai models including gemini can learn and evolve much quicker and better as compared to chat gpt The fourth superpower that Gemini has is a ton of data from Google. So unlike startups like OpenAI which are reliant on public data sources which may have legal complexities, Google has its own data sets from YouTube, Google Books and even Google Scholar. This lets them train their AI models without running into legal issues over using the copyrighted material. And you know what? Gemini's training isn't just limited to English text but also includes a variety of languages, mathematics and even scientific papers. So this broad range of training data gives Gemini a unique advantage in terms of diversity and depth of knowledge as compared to open AI. And you would be shocked to know that while all of us were having fun using ChatGPT, Google quietly changed its privacy policy 
and hidden in the fine print is a line that will blow your mind. We know nothing about it, but we all accepted it. So if you see this, Google's privacy policy says, Google uses information to improve our services and to develop new products, features and technologies that benefit our users and the public. For example, we use publicly available information to help train Google's AI models and build products and features like Google Translate, BARD and Cloud AI capabilities. So long story short, Google has almost the entire web at its fingertips and Gemini can tap into an incredibly large and diverse pool of information that is just far beyond the reach of its competitors. These are the reasons why Gemini AI is considered to be better than ChatGPT at the moment. In fact, in a series of 32 benchmarks, Gemini outperformed ChatGPT in 30 out of the 32 tests. And if you go deeper, there is one particular benchmark that is very very significant which is the Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark. This was a very tough test that covered 57 different subjects like law and biology and it was tested to see how well the AI understands and reasons about complex topics. In this test, Gemini Ultra scored an impressive 90.04% which was higher than the human experts who stood at 89.8%. So this high score shows that Gemini Ultra doesn't just understand a lot of information but it can also think through problems and understand what it is reading even better than humans. So does this mean that OpenAI has lost the battle? Absolutely not. Because if you see these comparisons, Google is beating OpenAI only by a small margin. And very soon, OpenAI is coming out with GPT-5. And that is going to be both spectacular and amazing. This is how neck to neck the AI war is at present. And now, if you go back to our chart, you will understand how powerful Microsoft is at this moment. You see, while Google's bread and butter are in question, for Microsoft, this capturing the search market is just yet another diversification segment. So even if Microsoft doesn't succeed in capturing the search market, it is still okay. But if they win this war, Microsoft will end up eating up a monopoly market to become the most powerful tech company in internet history. This is the story of the AI wars of 2023. And regardless of who wins or loses, there are three lessons that we all need to learn from this story. Lesson number one, no company, I repeat, no company, no matter how dominant or monopolized, is safe from disruption. So whether you are a small or a giant company, always keep innovating and have a small team or at least a single person who keeps on exploring different market opportunities for you. And you will see that in the long run, these experiments will help you tap into some amazing opportunities that your competitors are not even aware of. Lesson number two, as AI is getting better and better, even you need to upskill yourselves and you need to keep on learning how to use these AI tools to become an intangible asset to your company. Or if you're a business owner, please spend some time and keep on experimenting with these AI tools because a small discovery can put you way ahead of your competition. And the last bit of wisdom that actually comes out from this entire story is the fact that Timing is the most underrated variable that can build or destroy a business. Now, this statement has a very deep meaning. So I will attach a TED talk which will explain it better. So do have a look and let me know what you think. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.